you have many different types of EVP. <coughs> you have interactive EVP. You have residual EVP. All right. Sometimes when you're in an investigation, the message will come through. They are directly talking to you. They can call your name or they can answer the question that you've, you've posed to them. Um, other times, like in places historic, like Gettysburg or, you know, many historic places, it's just a residual EVP. When we were in Gettysburg, we captured several EVPs related to the Civil War. Um, some like, you know, Savory, I told you, the rebels must be squashed. All right? And, and things like that will come through. At one time, that was said. It's sound energy. It's out there. It's never going to dissipate. But at certain times and certain places, that residual energy will come back out to play. And you may just be in the right place at the right time where it's playing out again. Um, and that's an example of an imprint, a residual energy that's just out there. Um, and cap you, cap you, you are fortunate enough to capture it on your recorder. At other times, they will say, get out of here. Or, you know, um, uh, just something that's directly interactive with you. Answer your question. Um, like in the example at Tortilla Flats, where uh, Tortilla Flat, where we ask them if there are, you know, are there several spirits here, and they'll come back and say yes, or you know, yes, there are, or something like that. They just answer. Could you talk a little bit about white noise? What is it called? Sure. Um, it's white noise. Um, back in 2004, uh, we were privileged to have a, a conference. Uh, at that time, it was called the American Association of Electronic Voice Phenomena. Um, I had been a member since 2000, and um, they now are called the A Trans C because they deal with not only EVP but all sorts of um, transcommunication. Um, but they were um, contracted by Universal Studios when they were going to do a movie about EVP. The movie was called White Noise. I don't know if all of you have seen it. Um, yeah, but it really brought EVP to the forefront at that time. Uh, there was paranormal investigations, a lot of, you know, Hans Holzer type of things and stuff. But EVP was known because Sarah Estep had, you know, done it and way before her with Jurgensen and everyone else had, had exposure to these voices coming through. But it really got brought to the forefront with this movie. Um, it was about uh, a man who lost his wife and... Uh, people were doing EVP. They used several EVP. One of them was my dad's voice. Um, my father passed away in 2002. This EVP was captured in 2003. His name was Stanley Searles, and if you bring up the trailer of White Noise, you will hear that. He said, I love you. And the inflection in that EVP was his exact voice. So, with... Um, the movie White Noise, EVP really got brought to the forefront and everyone knows about it now and it's an essential tool in paranormal investigations. You can't do really a paranormal investigation without using, trying to capture EVP. Um, this is one of the, uh, it was a private home that we did uh, a couple of years ago with Abel Sharon who's our, our medium, our psychic. Uh, I use a lot of times I use infrared film, which is like where I get most of my best pictures. And it's getting harder to get. And most people today are using digital equipment. And digital equipment can change what you see. But as you can see in that window, there's something in that window that's outside, thank goodness, you know, that looks like it's beginning to materialize. In the, in the picture, there is a face. You can see like right up here. Um, this, I'm not sure, that could be a reflection of the curtain, but this up here, all right, is very, very clear that there's a face. It's almost looking inside, or it could be inside the house, reflecting on the glass panel. This was a house built in the 1700s in Merrimack, New Hampshire. Now, a lot of times when I do, when I do uh, infrared film, I don't use a flash. I don't use, I'll, I'll use like a, a, a small light um, on the camera or whatever, but I don't use a flash. This here is the Wyndham restaurant. This was a psychic that I had with me, this was probably six years ago I'd say we took, and Katie Crowd. She, we, we went downstairs in the cellar, Karen, 
Mike and myself are the only people down there and Katie. This is Katie here, and there's somebody walking right through her, right here. I don't even know who this person is, I have no idea, but you can see as clear as a bell. Does everybody see that? If you look at where her, her head is, her head is not even visible. What's there is the head of a man. You see it? He, 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 and again, in a lot of Leo's pictures, and a lot of time when we capture um, uh, real paranormal pictures, these apparitions seem to be looking down. I've yet to study why this, this happens, all right, but they seem to look down when they come through, and we have several examples of this. Again, you can see some of these on the website. But this guy is actually looking down. You can see his hair, his nose, his mouth, his ear, and now like he's walking right through her. And this was some energy that I had gotten. This is an investigation that I did to Tortilla Flats uh, a few years before that. But I stepped out into the hallway. This is in between those two parts of the, uh, of the building and just captured the energy. This is going, of course, somebody could say, well, you know, you move the camera. Well, how can you move it two different directions at the same time? You can't do it. This was taken upstairs. This is a young man. You can see his face at the bottom here. Now, you can see his hair, his eye, his ear. He's one of the dominant spirits at the Wyndham restaurant. And when we were doing our presentation a couple weeks ago there, the wait staff, she's been there for 15 years. She's been a wait staff there. And she hear, hears him, sees him all the time. And that night while we were doing our investigation, he was actually laughing. All right, in the other room, but there is times where she's you hear the footsteps of a little kid just run right down the hall. He's like right there, but but for Leo to have captured him on on uh, infrared is just phenomenal. Apparently, he was um, killed in a carriage accident in the 1800s. And the next shot I took, he just took off right out of there. You can see that that energy is coming from exactly the same place where his apparition was captured. Like, that's it. This one here, you can see the uh, beginning of the edge is changing. Again, it still looks like a knife. This is more like the back of her head. It gets better. Uh, this one here, you can see she's looking towards me. You can see her face, her hair. But that's not the only thing that's in here. And we've been showing these now for a while. There's a young man mm -hmm. right here that's mm -hmm. leaning in to kiss her. Mm -hmm. You can see his nose, his eyes, his hair. I would imagine when you do your investigation, a lot of the time is spent on reading, researching, and that kind of stuff. Oh my gosh, because I can't tell I you how imagine. much. Yeah. It's a lot, a lot of work. Um, analysis of EVP is incredible. All right, and if anyone uh, needs a tutorial as to how to do it, um, I did bring some packets with me. You're welcome to have one. But it's hours of analysis when you do an investigation, um, as well as e uh, Leo to process these <coughs> pictures. It's, you have, it's a labor of love when you're interested in the paranormal, all right, because it does. That's an excellent question. Take a lot of time. Well, when we do EVP, we do it in short sections, mm -hmm. like 15 seconds, 20 seconds, because I mean, you don't want to be listening to a lot of jibber jabber and nothing on there for, you know, for half an hour. And usually they, they come through that way, all right? They, it takes a lot of energy to manifest an EVP, so usually they're seconds long in duration. That's all they can do for the moment. So and what's they, the background on this aberration? The, the lighthouse, the lighthouse keeper, uh, I think, he killed his, uh, his friend who was the sheriff. I guess he thought he was fooling around with his wife. Uh, this is documented, so, but we don't know what happened to his wife. And we don't know if this was his wife because there's no, uh, there's no uh, record of it. And that was his friend that's leading him yeah. to kiss her. Uh, I will play some EVPs after, but if you want to hear the actual EVPs that were captured with all these cases, you can go to the website. Their cases are all categorically listed in the EVPs and pictures, so it's all there for you.